Okay, let me check also. Yeah, it's live. You can start, Bobita. A very warm welcome to all. It's a wonderful day. This is Bobita Sanathan, Center for Endangered Language, Tejpur University. And I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all present here. Thank you for joining us today's first international conference of Tibeto Burman Linguistics Association of Northeast India, organized by Tiblenai in collaboration with Tejpur University. May I now request Tiblenai President, Dr. Bautam Hauke, JNU to deliver welcome address. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bobita, for inviting me to deliver the presidential uh, address. So I, on behalf of uh, Tiblane uh, Association, uh, welcome all the participants of, uh, of this four days uh, uh, first international conference of Tibeto Burman Linguistics Association of Northeast India which is uh, held for the first time, ever held for the first time, online uh, moot in collaboration with uh, Center for Endangered Languages at Tejpur University. So this uh, um, international conference uh, has a good number of participants uh, in total we have near about uh, 59 uh, paper presenters. This will go for uh, four days. And every day we have uh, around four, four, four sessions along with uh, plenary talks. So we are privileged to have uh, plenary, uh, three plenary talks, uh, beginning with uh, Professor Delancey. This will be followed by Dr. Keto uh, Kurabe and uh, Professor Subrao. So on each day there will be, except on the last day, there will be uh, plenary talks on uh, very important themes uh, concerning the languages of Northeast India. So uh, we will be having a very uh, interesting and tight uh, schedule. Uh, the sessions uh, includes uh, phonology and uh, phonetics and phonology. It also has the morphology, syntax, semantics, historical linguistics, and language documentation, and other uh, various aspects of language and uh, themes related to uh, language and linguistic studies. So we are fortunate to have a good number of uh, paper presenters across uh, different universities from the Northeast India, and also mainland India, and perhaps uh, we will be having audience, uh, interested audience uh, from abroad. So this as it has been uh, highlighted in the program, this will be uh, broadcast through uh, uh, YouTube, the links are given. So everyone across the world can uh, click into the Zoom link and have uh, the live session for these four days. So I also take this uh, time to uh, shortly uh, inform the audience about how Tiblane uh, came into existence. So Tiblane, as of now, has been an informal uh, kind of uh, group that basically began through WhatsApp uh, communication. So uh, the pandemic, uh, the first wave of pandemic, we started way back in uh, 2020, by perhaps by March of 2020. And it went on uh, till this time. So by the end of last year, uh, uh, because of this pandemic, we cannot meet for conferences. We cannot have a contact with our fellow linguists from Northeast India in particular. And also keeping in view the interest of students working on diverse um, topics concerning the language of Northeast India. So we thought, few of us thought that uh, at least we begin with uh, WhatsApp communication. Let us get in touch on who are working on the languages of Northeast India. And through this uh, WhatsApp group, uh, we will be able to understand <clears throat> the need uh, faced by students, scholars, teachers uh, during pandemic time. 
So uh, this has grown uh, far and wide and it has received the attention of uh, our good uh, fellow uh, Tibeto Burmanese from Northeast India. And we have a good number of uh, what you call uh, uh, members who are actively participating in these uh, Tiblane exercises. So thus far we have uh, had, um, and the, perhaps this is the third round of our series of uh, initiatives that we have taken. The first initiative was, uh, we had a weekly, weekly talks uh, on various teams of Northeastern languages from different scholars of Northeast India. Then that was followed by some uh, uh, specialized talk. We had a specialized uh, talk from some select uh, uh, renowned uh, uh, figures in linguistics and tibeto Burman linguistics. This is the third series, which is uh, to organize a conference to bring together students, uh, teachers, and also native community linguists and any other uh, people interested in language and linguistics issue, uh, particularly in Northeast India. So this is our first initiative. And as uh, I have been stressing upon, this is in the, uh, in the, in the initial mode. Uh, we are trying to uh, register as an authentic uh, recognized body very soon, the process of which will begin at the end of this seminar. Uh, so the last day we will have a GBM wherein we will, uh, we will uh, uh, discuss all the issue that uh, Kiblane has to take into consideration uh, to become an, a full-fledged uh, body, academic body, uh, recognized uh, duly by the uh, 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 concerned uh, government agencies. So for today, uh, we have uh, uh, talks beginning uh, with, uh, after this inaugural session, we have uh, a talk um, uh, on the session on phonology, and this will be followed by, uh, uh, by morphology, then we have ethno-linguistics and cultural study, so most of the papers has been given to, uh, already in Tiblane, uh, this uh, Tiblane WhatsApp group. And the papers are very, very interesting. I hope uh, all the participants uh, live also in or in YouTube mood uh, will have a good time to learn about the languages of uh, Northeast India from various scholars uh, working on different aspects of the rich, uh, linguistics um, diversity that we have in Northeast India. So um, without uh, further ado and without um, uh, taking much of our time, uh, I once again uh, take this opportunity as an incumbent uh, president of this association uh, to uh, welcome um, all our participants. Uh, and I encourage, I wish you will have a fruitful uh, discussion uh, from this session. And at the end of it, uh, we will have a very uh, memorable and perhaps a very fruitful uh, conference. So with this, a few words, uh, once again, I thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak on behalf of uh, Tiblane. And I, and I now hand over the rest of the program to the coordinator, program coordinator. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, uh, may I request Professor Madhumita Barbara, local coordinator, Tejpur University, to share opening remarks for the conference? Yes. Um, we'll just... Hello, madam. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, please unmute yourself first. Yeah. Ma'am? Hello, ma'am. Can you hear us? Yes. 
Yes. Hello. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you now. Please share opening remarks for the conference, yes. No. Ma'am, we can hear you. Please, uh, please keep yes. continue, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Can we hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, please uh, carry on. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Yeah. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the executive members of Tibet Burman Linguistic Association of North East India for organizing the first international conference from 26th June to 29 June. And uh, when the idea of floating of a conference, um, this is the really We lost your connection, yes, ma'am. And when my you are not audible. So when, uh, should I start from the beginning, Bobita? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please begin uh, from the beginning. Sorry, line. this is, I have had some problem with the net today. At the mm -hmm. outset, I would like to congratulate the executive members of the Tibet Burman Linguistic Association of Northeast India for organizing the first international conference from 26 to 29 June, 2021. So when the idea of holding the conference came up, Bobita, Dr. Yes, Bobita yeah, yeah. came to me with a request from the executive body members that they would like to hold a conference in Tejpur University. And this is how today I am talking to you as a local host, technically. No, in reality, that didn't happen. I discussed with the, my faculty, especially the linguistic faculties of the English department. And they were very happy with the idea that Tiblani was coming to Tejpur University. And we requested the university authorities who very readily gave us uh, the permission to hold a conference. And we were able to we were able to get the permission and with a little bit of uh, fund, but things didn't work out the way we wanted. And so now we are meeting uh, online and yet I know that the conference would be a successful one. And I uh, say this because uh, since the time, the first day, that is when they had the first inaugural talk in uh, 2027, November 20, 2020, so from then onwards, the members, especially Monali, the secretary, Monali Liang Mai Lai and Dr. Bijan, they have all been very active as well as Bobita here. She would come to us and tell us about Diblani and how things are working. And so uh, we know that this is going to be because we've gone through some of the pay, uh, abstracts and they're quite interesting. 
So I wish my best wishes to all of you and to the organizers, to the paper presenters, and also to the audience, because Tiblane, I feel, is going to be a very important platform in the near future. And Tiblane has not only brought in the linguists and the researchers in linguistics of the region, but of the nation, as well as we have had a number of international scholars who have been time and again giving talks on the Tiblane platform. I once again congratulate and my best wishes to each and every presenter member of the uh, of this conference. I hope we get a very good start on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, now, now I would request uh, Dr. Monadi Longmailai, Secretary Tiblenai, Assam University, to deliver both of thanks. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bobita, for um, giving me a chance to say a few words in relation to um, Vote of Thanks. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank um, the president of Tiblane, Dr. Paul Tang Haukip, for his uh, cooperation and also in being functional in carrying the activities of Tiblane throughout since its inception and also being there and supporting us in ICT Plan A1. Uh, I would further like to thank our local uh, coordinator, Professor Madhumita Barbara, for he, her tremendous help and support in uh, whatever means we wanted to uh, gather for uh, uh, convening this uh, conference. And of course, with uh, Madhumita Ma'am, I, on behalf of Tiblane, would also like to thank the other joint coordinators, uh, Dr. Bobita Sarangthem, Dr. Uh, Charangna Widinibo, and Dr. Raghuribo Daimai, all from the Center for Endangered Languages, Tesco University, for all help that uh, you have given us in, uh, make, in going to make this uh, event a success. Um, I would also like to thank the PC members, that is the program committee members, for being a part of um, every decision making for ICT Plan A1. And um, I think I'd like to uh, announce the names and the program committee members are Dr. Uh, Paul Tang Hauke, Dr. T. Temsu Nungsang, Professor uh, Diren Singha, Dr. Mimi Ezung, Dr. Dokachi Mara, Dr. Elsa Bajit Singh, uh, Dr. Samir Deb Barma, Dr. Bijin Kumar Singh, uh, Dr. Alin, uh, Alindra Brahma, Dr. Krishna Buru, and Dr. Charina Wudinibo, Dr. Agibu Daimai. And I would also like to thank all the re paper reviewers for the abstracts because without their uh, help and support, it would not have been possible to gather uh, such large numbers of papers for the conference. I would also like to thank um, our speakers for the program, um, Professor Scott Delancey, uh, Professor K.V. Subarao uh, and Dr. Keita Kurabe for being kind in accepting our request to be invited speakers at the event. And we also look forward to hearing your talk in the coming days. Uh, I also would like to thank our uh, paper presenters and participants for having registered to be a part of the ICT Blane, and I wish our presenters all the best. And yeah, thank you so much, Bobita. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Manali. Uh, so with that, now uh, we are entering into the session. And for that, may I request Dr. L. Bijain Kumar Singh, uh, Joint Secretary, Tiblanai, to give this session announcement. Over to you, Bijain. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Today, uh, the first day of ICT Blade 1, that is the 26th June 2021, we have four sessions. Out of that, one will be a plenary talk. As mentioned by our uh, president, Dr. Bautang Haukif, it will be a talk from uh, Professor Scott Delancey. So the first session uh, will be begin by 9.30. That will be 
the phonology one, and a session will be chaired by Dr. Pak Thang Haukif. And there are four papers. And uh, se second session of day one, it will be morphology one, and it will start from 12 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. And the session will be chaired by Dr. Bobita Sarangtem. And the third session, it will be, uh, it will begin from 3.30 till 6 p.m. So in all the session, we have four, four paper each. And at the end of today's uh, session, we have a plenary talk from Professor Scott Delancey at 7.30. And the, uh, this plenary talk will be chaired by Professor K. H. Diren Singha. So this is a brief highlight of today's session. Now, uh, is, uh, let me confirm the speakers of the first session, uh, I think. Bibitinio. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Bibitinio is already here in the room and I have already saw Reveni also. Yes, Reveni is here. Then Biman. Yeah, Biman is also here. And, and so, yes. So all the speakers of the first sessions are present in the uh, Zoom room. So uh, we would like to uh, request all the paper presenters to kindly check your PowerPoint as well as your videos or and audios. Yeah, so first uh, I request Bibi Tunio to kindly check your audio and your slides if you uh, wish to share it from your end. Yeah, Bibi Tunio, am I audible to you? Uh, yes, sir, yeah. you're audible. Mm. Yeah, I think your audio is fine. So if you want to, you want to uh, share your slide from your end, then you can have a check. All right, all right. Uh, sir, I think uh, you uh, need to make me the co-host. Uh, Monali, please make co-host. <laughs> Let me make meantime revenue also. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Uh, Pijan, can you please announce the names once again? Yeah. Uh, first one is Bibi Tino. She's here. The second one is Rivini. Rivini Mobe. Yeah. Then Biman. And I think Temsu is already a co-host, yeah. Biman. Yeah, Biman. Yeah, Bibi, you go on. All right. Uh, uh, sir, is it visible? Yes, yes. Uh, please put it into uh, full screen mode. Mm. Okay, fine. Yeah. 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 You please stop your sharing. All right. Yeah. Reveni, uh, let's have a check of your slide and your audio. Yes. Yes. I think your audio is fine. Yes, Yeah, Rivini, are you trying to uh, share your screen or? Uh, Rivini, are you, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Reveri, are you facing any problem uh, in sharing of your PPT? You may need to make her co-host. You got disconnected? Reveri, Yeah. So anyway. we can move on to the next. Yeah, Biman, uh, Biman is there. Yeah, Biman, please check your audio and slide. You are muted, please unmute yourself. Uh, Biman, still you are muted. Please unmute. Okay, let me ask him to unmute. Okay, fine. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you now. Okay, okay. Is it okay, brother? Yes, yes, yes. We can see your uh, slides. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. Please stop your sharing. And the last, uh, yes, uh, Dr. T. Tim Sunung Sang and Amela Chang Kiza. I think they are also in the. Yeah, but, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes. You are audible. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Yes, yes, it's, it's okay. visible. Yeah, uh, before I leave, I just want to request all participants, please uh, rename yourselves. Uh, there are some with the initials, some with the... Uh, yes, you know, yes. Yeah. Yes, yourselves. yeah, uh, when I send mail to all the pre presenter and the participants, I request them to log in with their register name, even though we have, uh, there are some, with the device name. So uh, please rename yourself with your uh, register name. Okay, Rivini, are, are you here? Sorry, still see it's not here. Uh, we have four minutes. Mm. Uh, Bijan, you can text her maybe because uh, her number is there in the data list. Yes, 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 yes. let then me do that. Uh, get back uh, to Yes. Uh, I think our chair also has to be there. Uh, Dr. Pautang Haukip, he, he has gone. I am here, Mona Lee. I am waiting. You're okay. I am, I am. I am oh. in. Then I'll make you co-host. I could not see you. <laughs> Pautang Haukip, yeah. You don't need to make me a co-host because I won't be sharing any screen. So there's no point. If my audio is audible, uh, that will suffice, yeah. Okay, okay, no problem. Actually, just to keep you on top and visible, I have made you co-host. Yeah, I have contacted Rebini. Uh, she's trying to join us. Uh, if once she joined, then uh, as I have her PPT with me, I can share it from my end also. Okay. So, okay. yes, uh, we are almost two minutes more. In case uh, mm, she didn't join, uh, by the time she is about to give her talk, then we will uh, save it to the last of in the last of the session. Yes, yes. So if yes, we will do in the same way as Professor Diren Sina also suggested uh, to invite the next speaker in case he, if she didn't join by the time. Okay, uh, so it's almost the time. Now, uh, I would like to request uh, Professor, uh, sorry, Dr. Pak Thang Haukif. Uh, he is the president of Tivlani and he is an associate professor in the Center for uh, Linguistics in Zoharlan Nehru University, New Delhi. Uh, sir, I uh, invite you to chair this session, uh, Phonology One. So as we already mentioned, uh, all the paper presenter will be given a 30 minutes slot of presentation out of that 20 will be presentation and 10 will be for the q and a sessions okay thank you over to you uh Okan, sir. okay uh once again uh i welcome all the participants of this session the first session on uh, uh phonology one so our time schedule as given in the program is from 9 30 to 11 30 
uh, each of the presenters will be uh, given uh, 30 minutes of presentation. So we have uh, four uh, presenters for this session. Uh, the names are uh, Bibe Tunu Mary from the Nagaland University. Then we have Reveni Mobi from Nagaland University. Then the third presenter is Diman Dev Burma from Tripura University. Last but not the least, Dr. Temnusa and Amenla uh, Tsangkiza uh, from IFLU uh, Silong. So uh, without uh, you know, wasting much of our time, uh, I take this privilege uh, to uh, the first speaker, Vipeto uh, Mere, uh, kindly take over the, your time. So you have uh, sufficient time, 30 minutes. Mm, so you may take your time now. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, thank you, sir. A very good uh, morning to you. Um, so privileged to be first presenter of our first international conference of Tiblani of Northeast India. Uh, I'll just straightforward sh start sharing my screen. Um, yeah, so uh, the paper which I will be presenting today is on the topic, Vowels of Pula, which is a dialect of Chagasang, uh, uh, spoken in the district uh, in district of Nagaland. To begin with, uh, let me just give you a brief introduction. Now, Pak is one of the major districts in Nagaland with a total population of oh, 1,63,294 that according to 2011 general census report. Um, it was established in 1973 and is located in the southern part of Nagaland, bounded by Myanmar in the east and Znoboto and Tinsan district in the north, Manipur state in the south. And the word PEC comes from the word PEC Rekeze, meaning watchtower. The education sector comprises of uh, 116 primary schools, 14 uh, middle schools, 18 high schools. Oh. Oh, 18 high schools and one higher secondary school and three colleges. The languages spoken in the district are Chokri, Keja, Pochuri, and Pula. Uh, Pula is spoken in Razabar range, which is situated in the southwest of Pag district. It comprises of four villages, namely Javame, Tsipvame, Zelome, Zavichi, and the town of Raziba. It was only in 1963 after Nagaland got its statehood that um, these four villages of the Pumais were brought under the Nagaland geographical boundary under Pak district and the language recognized as a variety of Chekasang with the speakers referred to as Chekasangs. There are approximately 6,000 to 10,000 Pula speakers in Nagaland. Uh, now the language of the people that the native speakers addressed is called Pula, which the other neighboring communities, especially you know, Chokri and Keja called it Sapu. The people of Pula can exclusively communicate in Sumi, Tinidi, and Nagamis. This research will lay emphasis on the variety of Pula spoken in Pak district of Nagaland. Here is the map of Nagaland showing the uh, Pak dist uh, uh, district uh, in the red highlighted area. A closer view of Pag district where Razabar range is situated is uh, marked at the uh, southwest of the district. Uh, coming to the genetic classification. Uh, Bradley 1997, he has classified or placed Pula under the Chekasung group along with uh, Chokri and Keja. Uh, Lewis et al. 2013 have also classified Pula as a member of the Angami Pochuri group, which they consider to be a subgroup, sub branch of the Kukichin. Uh, 
here I have given a brief comparison between Pula spoken in Manipur and Pula spoken in Nagaland. Uh, for this, I have referred Sahana's work and there he has recorded six phonemic uh, monophthons that is E, A, A, E, U, O. And uh, for this study, uh, similarly to uh, Sahana's work, I have also recorded E, A, A, E, U, and O. That is altogether six monophthons. And for diphthons, uh, he has recorded four diphthons. Those are E, O, I, and AU. Where, whereas in this um, in this study, I have recorded seven diphthons. That is OI, AU, IO, UA, UI, IA, and IE. Uh, for diphthons, he has also showed that all the diphthons, the on glide begins from two initial targets, that is a uh, and a, uh, and moves towards uh, two terminal targets, that is u uh, and o. Uh, whereas in the pula spoken in Nagaland, there is no particular initial target, and the diphthons contrast to that of the Sahana's work, except for au. Uh. Um, coming to the vowel distribution, the front close uh, unrounded vowel and uh, uh, central open unrounded vowel E and A occurs in word initial, middle and final position, whereas the rest A, E, U and O occurs only in word initial and final position. As for pula spoken in Nagaland, uh, the vowel distribution is such that all the vowels that is e, a, a, e, u, and o occurs in uh, word initial, middle, and final position. Um, keeping in mind the fact that the name of the language is same in both the state and you know uh, they are mutually uh, intelligible to some extent. However, it should also be noted that uh, there are, you know, ob obviously some variations or some differences. And for this, uh, this may be uh, attributed to the geographical location. And in order to prove this, I have given four, uh, I mean, three examples. That is the first example is had, where Pula in Manipur, they call it Bui, and Pula in Nagaland, it is um, called P. Uh, the second example here is uh, people where Pula in Manipur, they call it Mai and uh, Pula in Nagaland, they call it Me. The last and the third example here is Horn, which uh, the Pula uh, speakers in Manipur, they call it Kai and the Pula uh, speakers in Nagaland, they call it Ke. Coming to the vowels of Pula, um, as I have mentioned er earlier, uh, there are six pure vowels or monophthons, and here are some examples. I mean the examples. Uh, B uh, meaning yam, ne meaning you, m meaning sweet, ba meaning hand, uh, who, I, I don't know whether I'm uh, pronouncing it. Uh, and vo, vo, meaning big. Mm. Uh, coming to the contrastive pairs and uh, the minimal pairs. Uh, the first one we have here is contrast based on the position of the tongue and uh, front vowels, vowel contrast with uh, back vowel, E versus O. Uh, the examples are given below. Likewise, E versus U and A versus U, A versus O, and so on. The examples are listed below. The second one we have here is um, front vowel contrast with the central vowel, 
that is the first one is a versus a a versus a a versus a and e versus a the examples are given below and the third one we have here is the back vowel contrasts with the central vowel u versus a as in the word thread and to enter uh, the second one is the contrast is based on the height of the tongue the first one is the closed vowel a uh, closed uh, versus the closed mid that is the e versus a u versus o and u versus a uh, considering the lip position of the pula vowels it has two rounded vowels that as in uha bridge ojo meaning today and uh, four unrounded vowels uh, uh, where e mean itrume meaning us or we a meaning yes other meaning bamboo early meaning eagle now coming to the vowel sequences there are two vowel sequences uh, recorded so far so the movement of the first vowel is slightly carried over to the following member of a sequence yet all the vowels functions as distinct syllabic peaks which are different from diphthongs the first vowel sequence we have is sava um, meaning so and foapi meaning offering and fomoashi meaning essence uh, coming to the vowel distribution the first vowel is E, which is a front close unrounded vowel. It occurs in word initial, middle, and final positions. Uh, the examples are given below. And the second one is A, which is a half close uh, front unrounded vowel. It occurs in initial, middle, and final positions. The examples are given below. And the third one is a, which is a central half close vowel and its occurrence is found in initial middle and final positions examples are given below the fourth vowel uh, is a which is an open unrounded central vowel um, it occurs in all the positions of the word that is initial middle and final the examples are given below and the uh, the fifth one is U, which is a close rounded back vowel. It occurs in initial, middle, and final positions. The last and the sixth example we have here is O, which is a half closed back rounded vowel. It occurs in all the three positions in the word, uh, that is initial, middle, and final positions. The examples are given below. Now, coming to diphthongs, um, this study has recorded seven diphthongs. Um, the first one is oi, which occurs only in final position, as in the word moi, meaning no. And the second one is au, which occurs both in middle and final position, as in the word ngobame, meaning enemy, and mokau, meaning cleverness. And io occurs in a uh, final position only, as in the word hyo means spear. And the uh, ua uh, diphthong, it occurs in final position only, as in the word trua, meaning rumors. And the next uh, diphthong is ui, which occurs only in the final position as well, uh, which uh, as in the word bui, meaning half. The next, uh, sorry, the next uh, diphthong we have is the ia, which occurs in the middle position, as in the word rumuvia p2, which means mercy. And the last diphthong we have is uh, ie, ie uh, which occurs both in the middle and the final position, as in the word nyadu. Orange, orange, that is a fruit, and uh, kie, meaning clever. This is the vowel chart, I mean the different chart. 
Uh, in conclusion, as a brief summary, it should be recalled that all the pure vowels in Pula occurs in word initial, middle, and final position. Vowels may be defined with an open approximation without any obstruction, partial or complete, in the air passage. And similarly, the contrast of vowels are you know, given based on the height of the tongue, uh, position of the tongue and lip rounding. As for diphthongs, the study has shown a huge number of diphthongs, although the occurrence in words are limited. No diphthongs were found in word initial, it occurs only in word middle and final position. Um, now, the distribution of Pula dialect under Pak district is limited to only four villages, which shows the scanty number of speakers. This dialect of Chekasang is relatively unknown to even the other Nagat language communities. So because of the limited number of speakers and with almost no literary work undertaken in the language in the context of Nagaland, this study has become uh, imperative in developing the dialect and bringing it at par with uh, Keja and Chokri. For this study, I have done a phonological analysis involving minimal sets of vowels present in the language. These are my references, and that's uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Bibetano, for your uh, presentation, a nice presentation. Uh, should we have a, uh, uh, we have few more minutes. Uh, we have around, say, around, we have 15 minutes, in fact. So should we go for uh, comments and suggestions? What is your suggestion? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, be better not uh, don't close your uh, your um, presentation. Uh, keep yes. your presentation presentation open. Yeah, keep it open. Uh, you go back to uh, the initial pages, uh, initial slides where you have something like diphthong from Nagaland Pola and yeah. from Manipur Pola. Can you go uh, back something like I, my? Here, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the one. So the first on the left is of uh, Nag uh, Pola of Nagaland, right? Uh, on yeah, the left right. side is Mani Manipur, right? Mm, right. So Pai is from Nagaland and P is from, uh, well, from uh, Pai is, is from Nagaland and Pai is from uh, Manipur. Manipur, yes, right. Okay, so here uh, you can vividly see that uh, uh, the diphthongs in the word like pay have has become p. So uh, diphthongs of uh, Paula in Manipur in words like uh, head, people, horn uh, have become monophthong. So you have in uh, Paula in Nagaland you have only monophthongs, right? Yes, right. So according to this data, according to this data. Whenever you have diphthongs in words like head, people, horn, and other examples, perhaps in your data box. So these become monophthongs. So is this consistent throughout? So whenever you have something like, especially now we are dealing with nouns, perhaps the examples on the left are all nouns. So head, people, horn, they're all nouns. So mm -hmm. is it the case that whenever you have a diphthong in words, in nouns, words, uh, of uh, of the category of nouns, so do they always become monophthong? So diphthongs become monophthong. Is this the case everywhere, or? Uh, sir, it no, is? it's not consistent. But uh, cons um, uh, conscious, uh, it has. I have uh, you know uh, bring out the words from Manipur that uh, it uh, uh, all the words contains diphthongs and. Suddenly, you know, the words in uh, Nagaland, it has, uh, you know, um, uh, converted into monophthons. No, uh, my point is, it's not consistent. It's suddenly, uh, this just my collection of words, it suddenly became like this. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to know whether this, uh, this is cons consistent throughout. Mm. Uh, anyway, yeah, I now welcome the comments suggestion from the uh, audience. So I just wanted to point out this. So participants can uh, pour in, you can ask questions. We have uh, 10 minutes of question. 
Okay, can I can I say something? Yes, yes, please. Am I, am I audible? Okay. So, you are audible. Uh, <laughs> uh hi sir i want to thank uh, uh hi i want to thank v is your name v bay yes right vb okay, pronounce your name oh, thank you for the wonderful presentation and i'm uh it's very interesting to see the the variation especially in the deep songs and also uh in particular i was uh, very interested on the consonant cluster that is there with like through uh, like rumors you saw, and, and also uh, through me, us or we. So those are actually, uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to know if the, the data here is from particularly one variety of a village or is it randomly from uh, some speakers or like, I want to know that also actually. Um. Uh, the data collected from um, Razaba people and Javame village people. So uh, it's mixed. Um, oh my God. Yeah. yeah, it's not only uh, confined to only one village, just a mixture of uh, villages where Razaba range is, uh, Razaba town is a mixture of all the four villages. So I've uh, collect, uh, I have some informants from consultant from Razaba town and from Javama village as well. Actually, um, currently I'm also doing a uh, work where I'm collecting all the dialects of Pula spoken in Manipur actually. So there are, we identified around 17 uh, dialects where uh, we're working with around 340 speakers. Like we're compiling a huge database. So uh, it's, it's really happy. I'm really happy to see that uh, some of you are working on the dialects of Pula in like in Chakisang area. So it's mm -hmm. it's very encouraging. I'm really happy to know that. And my uh, I also work uh, especially the vowel qualities with uh, with Sir Priyanku Sharma. We did a paper. I think you cited in the reference where actually phonetically the U sound mm. that we work on, like the, the variety that we work on was on Koide. So uh, actually, the the location of the articulation is actually front uh, rounded, not back rounded. When we see the formance value, so I think it will be interesting to see that also, like in in future. And secondly, uh, especially the the deep thongs, it is really fascinating. And I will also suggest that if we can look into the vowel heights, if the three or two vowels are really a difference or they are of different syllable, when you see the, when you closely looked into the pronunciation, I think that is beautifully there in Angami Tinede, where we look into their three thongs, you know, and all those. So how are, are they really a, really a syllable or uh, are they like, there's a vowel heights which consonant or loss like the palatal or uh, some certain vowels. I think those area will be it's, it will be very very interesting, and the the words like add variation and all those are also really fascinating. If we can find like as sir um, sir how keeps say if we can get a pattern that will really explain a lot to the sound change in in so called the Angami Puchuri languages, which is highly. Uh, Innovated, which been it's very hard to reconstruct the the prototype. So if we can at least have some consistent of these sound changes, if we if we can all work together and find out, then it will give so many inputs to the, especially the Angami Puchuri languages in terms of uh, the historical perspective, how sounds have changed. Yeah, I think uh, you have done a uh, excellent work, and we can always work together. And I'm so happy to meet you here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, same here, sir. <laughs> I'm seeing you for the first time. I've read your papers, but seeing you for the first time. <laughs> so good okay. to see you. So, for you could uh, discuss uh, the uh, Revitano can consult uh, Sahani. He is an expert on polar, polar di and dialects, especially phonology. Now, Priyanku has a question. So, Priyanku, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, Vibe, thank you for this uh, wonderful presentation. Really nice presentation and uh, really nice to see 
All of you are working in different languages. Thanks for this. Uh, I have a very quick question and the, I don't know much about the language, so you have to educate me on this. Uh, see, on one hand, you're saying that these uh, diphthongs like pi uh, has become P. In fact, I hear that uh, when Sahanis says Pola, you say Pula. So I'm guessing like, you know, that that's also uh, like diphthongs being a monophthong. On the other hand, uh, the second point that you are putting, second row that you are putting in this particular slide, it says that uh, four phonemic diphthongs and in the, the Nagala and Gratu, there are seven. So are these four phonemic diphthongs splitting into seven? Or there is some other like, you know, monophthongs in the uh, Manipur Pula are becoming uh, uh, diphthongs in the Nagala and Pula. Have you looked into it? Because I, I find it a little bit contradictory that one side you are saying that uh, diphthongs are becoming monophthongs, and at the same time, you're saying that there are more diphthongs in the pola in Nagaland. So that's my uh, uh, very, uh, how do I say, novice question. And uh, 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 thanks thanks for this wonderful work. Thank you again. Yeah, um, so uh, thank you for your question. That's something I'm also thinking about. I cannot come to a conclusion right now. So uh, as uh, I agree that I cannot give you the answer now, but uh, definitely, I will look to it. Sure, thanks. Okay. So, yeah, you got this uh, beautiful suggestion from uh, uh, Priyanku, uh, wherein you have given seven diphthongs, but mm -hmm. actually the diphthongs below example, uh, the diphthongs in uh, from, Man from Manipur has become monophthongs. So this raises a lot of eyebrows, yeah. as, mm -hmm. as has been pointed about uh, Sahani and also by Priyanku. Look into this whether they are high tasks in the sense that whether they are pronounced as one unit or is there some kind of uh, what you call uh, break in the pronunciation or is there any phonological process will glide or something is something something has gone into so this will be a potential area for you to mm -hmm. look into and uh, two of the comments are very uh, helpful for you I hope yes, you will sir. take uh, this seriously and look into this as soon as possible. So we have another question from Kairi Gapsa. So his question or her question is, population of Pola is based on general census report. So I am a little curious or confused about general census report. What do you mean by general census report? Are you referring, referring to census of India or what do you mean by general, uh, general census report? Uh, yes, right. That's the general census report of India. Okay, okay. You're talking about census of India, right? Okay, now, okay, we have two minutes. If there are pressing questions, I have two minutes. Uh, yeah, I can still... Uh, one quick answer. question, Pauta. Huh? One quick question. Yes. Uh, just, uh, thank you for the yeah, very clear presentation. Uh, I just had a question on this uh, it being a dialect of... I think it's uh, unique because here now you have a case where it's a dialect of Chakesang as well as a dialect of Ola. Uh, so, I was just wondering, uh, of course, being a part of the Tenemi group, there's, there's definitely going to be uh, similarities. Uh, being a dialect of Jakisang, is that more of a socio-political uh, decision rather than uh, the uh, structural aspect? Uh, could you please, please repeat your question again, sir? No, I didn't. Uh, calling it a dialect of Jakisang. Uh, is that more of a political or socio-political uh, reason of doing so? Uh, because here you have an interesting situation where it's a dialect of both Kesang because it's in that particular region. Uh, mm. And also it's a, a, a dialect of uh, Pola because definitely uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, from that tribe. So here you have two, you know, aspects. Um. So my question is whether it, Calling it a dialect of Chakesang, is that is that more of a uh, socio-political rather than a linguistic uh, reason? Um, so I cannot give you a concrete answer, but uh, it may be because of the social political reasons and partly because of the geographical uh, demarcations where it uh, where the four villages have been demarcated into Nagaland uh, state boundary uh, after 1963. So, um, I don't know if I uh, answered your question, but 
יאללה, די, עד עדינה, אז מה קורה? Yeah, okay, so Madam Tante has uh, uh, given a comment. She says uh, diphthong of Manipur versus diphthong of Nagaland. So she says that uh, uh, diphthong Manipur, that means the diphthongs of Manipur versus the diphthongs of Nagaland. The diphthongs in Manipur do not exist in Nagaland variety. So it could be the case that the diphthongs of Manipur, uh, Manipur Pola do not exist in, uh, in, in, in the Pola of Nagaland variety. So this might explain the differences between uh, diphthongs and monophthongs. So you can mm. take note of this for your, uh, what you call, for your uh, improvement of your paper. Huh? So, yes, uh, so this is mm. So... We are right on time, so I would not be taking uh, much question because we have lots of paper and I don't want to stretch my time beyond the schedule. So thank you, Bibi uh, Tenu, for your uh, paper, presentation, uh, your paper, and kindly improve upon uh, your paper based on the suggestion that you have obtained. So yes, now yes, on to, uh, we now move on to uh, next presenter. The next presenter in our list is Vevino Movi from Nagala University. And she also will be presenting on phonology of Paula, which is a complement of the past paper. So now we uh, welcome Revine uh, Movi to take over at the time. So time is up for you, yeah. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, you are very much audible. <laughs> Uh, Ravine, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes you are. are. Yes. So my name is Ravine Movi from Nagaland. And I am a student presently doing a diploma course from uh, CNTLS in Nagaland University. So um, <clears throat> today my presentation is on phonology of Pola. To begin with, let me give a brief introduction on the language. Okay, so uh, Pola is a language spoken by the people of Pumai Nagals of Chekhasan tribe in Pike district, Nagaland, and Pumai tribe in Senapati district, Manipur. However, this re research work is based on the spoken variety of Chekhasan tribe in Pak district, Nagaland. And the language community in Pak district, Nagaland is covered as Razaba range consisting of three villages, that is Javame, Sufme Zalome, and Razaba town, which is the center of the town of the three villages. Uh, talking about the status and the development of the language in Pak district, it is extremely very poor. In fact, uh, the other language community don't even know that this uh, language exists. Um, and uh, till now, Tinidi is used as an official written language in um, <clears throat> Razaba range. And this is the outline of my presentation, vowels, consonant, tones, and syllable. So according to my research and data collected, I have found eight vowels with six monophthongs and two diphthongs. It is three front, one central, and two back vowels, and uh, two diphthongs. This is the um, vowels, vowel chart. Well, first we have the vowels, occurrence of front vowel. Here, <coughs> E, higher front unrounded vowel, it occurs in word initial, middle, and final position. As we can see from the example, Ime human in middle, this firewood, final, Murray X. And uh, next we have the uh, A is a mid front unrounded vowel, occurs in word middle and final position. So it uh, in the middle position, ghetto means knife, final, in final position, re mean intestine. Uh, 
Uh, in order to save the time, I won't be reading out all the examples. Next, we have a, a low front unrounded vowels. It occurs in all the three positions initial, ame, friend, middle, largi, school, and in final position, jina, brothers. Next, we have the occurrence of central vowel. A mid central vowel occurs in all the three positions early, eagle, hoopy, duck. Her hand. And the next one we have back vowel, which occurs, or U back vowel occurs in middle and final position. It should be beautiful, Kidu, April. Then the next one, uh, O mid back around vowel occurs in middle and final position. Jopa, Saturday, Bobo, branch. So that is the central uh, monophthong. And here we have the diphthong. As per my data collected, I have found only two diphthong, O and O. The occurrence of diphthong. <clears throat> Au occur in all the three positions. Au, okay, and in middle, balsa, bangles, and in final position, now C. Then the next one we have O, which occur in middle and final position. In middle position, it's Suki so hospital, and in final position, so meet. So it, uh, that's the monophthong, and here we have the a minimal peers in vowel. Here, the first one we have a front versus back, that is e versus u, re, horse, ru, handle, then e versus u, e, intestine, ru, handle, and e versus o, ne, people, mo, brother in law, then a versus u, ra, ros, ru, handle, a versus o, ra, rust, ro, basket, and e versus o, Raw basket, re, horse. In the next one, we have front versus central. E versus a, re, horse, re, stitch. Then a, a versus a, le, point, le, song. Then the next one, a versus a, na, stuff, no, yeah. Then we have the central versus back. A versus u, no, uh, ear, nu, village. Then a versus o, r, right, raw, basket. Next one, close versus meet. I, E versus a, uh, le pot, uh, le point, U versus a, ru, handle, raw basket. Then next, close versus open. E versus a, uh, p hat, par grinder. Then the next one is close meet versus open. E versus, a versus a, uh, p pu. Bar grinder. So that is the uh, minimal peers that are found in uh, vowels. Then next we have the consonant. <clears throat> As per my research and data collected, I have found 28 consonants out of which there are 14 voiceless and 14 voice. So this is the table for a polar consonant. Now we have here plosive first. Um, <clears throat> Plosive, first we have the bilabel pa, which is a voiceless bilabel plosive, and it occurs in initial and middle position. In initial position, po means father. In middle position, tapa, mande. Then uh, the bilabel voice plosive, it also occurs in the initial and middle position. In initial position, bu, gant. Middle position, subo, hammer. Then next we have the alveolar, alveolar, voiceless alveolar plosive. It occurs in uh, initial and middle position. In initial position, to means it, mote, in middle, mote, uh, sit, dan, the, uh, da, we have the initial, do, dance. In middle, mode, uh, for, then the veiler, k, ki, house. Uh, sorry, this I have. Make the mistake the spelling there. Then in middle position, largi school. The next we have the aspirated plosive, the um, <clears throat> bilabel aspirated plosive. P in initial position, pizza trouser. Uh, middle position, bupi wooden stool. Then the alveolar t, um, alveolar aspirated plosive. In the initial position, t pedi matasha um, wetnesty. Then the veiler. K, kana, animal, and in middle position, buckle, k, 
caterpillar. Next, we have the nasal, <coughs> the um, bilable, bil voice bilable nasal. It occurs in the initial and middle position. In initial position, mobo, brand, middle position, sama, root of a tree. Then the alveolar, no, and initial, ne, u, and middle, uh, tenabu, wom. We also have the palatonia, uh, which occurs in uh, initial and middle position, in initial position, nyo, sulan, then middle, vonya, ash. Then the vilungo, uh, ngamada, polite, and munga, colorless. Then the uh, next we have the affricates, alveolar, as, um, okay, uh, al alveolar affricates, the, in the, which occur in initial and middle position with the initial position, the meh means elder, and in mid uh, middle position, chitotsu means night. Then the post alveolar, ch, jo, gao, and in middle position, kamuja, spoon. Then uh, the ja, uh, voice, post alveolar affricates occur only in the uh, initial position, the water, and zupa like. We have the aspirated affricates, um, <clears throat> alveolar aspirated affricates, ta, it, which occur only in the initial position, at means tree, and the post alveolar um, aspirated affricate, which occur only in the, uh, again, initial position. There's some typing mistake here, I'm sorry. Okay, then um, <clears> to, <throat> which means morning. Next, we have the fricatives with the uh, labiodental fur occurring in middle and initial position. In initial position, for means wrestle, refer, bridge. Then next, we have the uh, v, voice labiodental fricative occurring in the initial and middle position. Initial, v, vegetable, middle, novo means earring. Then alveolar, sir. Uh, occurring in the initial and the final position. In initial, so means mid, and in middle, dushi means uh, thick. Then the voice alveolar fricatives occurring in initial and middle position again. In initial, the means lie, and middle, mozu, jun. And we have the post alveolar, <coughs> sh, um, it occur in word initial and middle position with initial shu, dear, and middle yushi, ugly. Then in glot, we have the glottal ha, um, voiceless call of fricative, which occur in initial and final position. Sorry, it should be medial. Uh, <clears throat> in initial, possible hammer, and in middle, uh, which means uh, leaf of a tree. The next we have the approximant. Approximant is a voiceless alveolar approximant, and uh, this is the only uh, consonant in polar occurring in all the, the three positions that is initial, middle, and final. In initial, withdrawal, bones, middle, mare, sorry, and final, mer, mouth. Then the palatal, yeah, we have uh, it occurring in initial and middle position. <clears throat> the initial position, yeah, means uh, car a carpet like made with bamboo for drying uh, AD. Then um, in middle, yeah, means spectacle. Then we have the veiler, or voice alveolar approximate, and this also occur only in the uh, middle position, where to tell uh, means younger sister, and tell means younger brother. The next we have the aspirated approximant her voice alveolar asp aspirated approximant occurring in the initial position. Fushi, gospel, fru, autumn. Then the lateral approximant, then alveolar la, which occur in initial and um, <coughs> middle position. In initial, niloha, weak, and in middle, alani, tomato. Next is the uh, consonant. Minimum, minimum years. So we have the pa versus pa, where pull, father, pull, search. Ta versus ta, 
tree, tree sprout and tree night. Then ba, ba versus ba, bao, te, bao, han. Then uh, ta versus da, da, which means go or walk. Then da, bit. Then ka versus ka, ka, white, ka, fish. Then no versus no, me, people, me, you. Then fu versus vu, for, wrestle, vo, pick. Then her versus her, she, re, horse, she, draw. And the next we have the dawn. Uh, so as per my um, data collected, I have found uh, three registered dawn of mid, low, and high. And here I've given only for example. So the first one, va means crab, va, deer. Last five va, minutes. Body. Yes, sir? Last five minutes. Uh, okay, sir. I'll try to wind up. <laughs> and uh, this one we have there. Um, here, be, be, give, be, judicious, be, hat. Then na, meet, uh, staff, na, low, na, young. Next one. Do, go, do, gone, do, be. And, um, next, we have the syllable, and uh, we have, I have found uh, four syllable patterns uh, with V, CV, CCV, and CVC. V with E means me, CV, Bu for hat, CCV, bre, cup, CVC, mer, mode. So this is the last topic and to wind up with, I have a short conclusion. So as per the data collected, I have 136 sound with eight vowels with six and one of tone and two diphthong and 28 consonants with 14 voice and 14 voiceless. Then um, <clears throat> vowel sign like E, R and O occur in all the position and uh, E, R, U, O and O occur only in the middle and final position. Then sound like and wa are very limited and sound like cha and ha occur only in the initial position and cha and wa occur only in the final position. Then the consonants uh, do not occur in final position except for uh, ha. So this is um, a presentation. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh... Uh, Revin, uh, Rev, uh, Revine Movi for your uh, wonderful presentation, short presentation. So now uh, we invite the comments. Uh, we have around 10 minutes of comments. So the floor is open for comments. Kindly pour in, yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yeah, Lord. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Now is the time for comments. We have around ten minutes. So comments. You go to your consonant. Go to your consonant chart. Yeah, keep your consonant chart open. Uh, the presenter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go. Uh, keep your consonant chart open. Okay. Okay. Your cons uh, okay. So yeah, um, uh, somebody want to speak now? Yeah, comments okay. now. Uh, I, I would like to know if, if this is the same variety that the previous presenter presented. Mm, yes, sir. Oh, okay. The spoken variety in uh, tricks and track, in fact, right. Yeah, so so I think you presented only two or uh, three diphthongs? Uh, yeah, I got only two. Two, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So that's, I think we have to work, you have to work together and see where we're missing, yeah, I think, the done. data. And I'm, yeah. I'm again extremely happy that you are working on this variety. And <clears throat> one, one thing I really want to know is if you could uh, see the vowel minimal pairs with one consonant and try to fix with all the vowels, like if you can try in that uh, format or structure, I think it will also give so many explanation for many of us to see the sound change. One, one consonant and how many vowels are possible. Yeah, and again, the consonant cluster that is coming in and the uh, even the palatal nasal you use, if it's real there or is it a deep thumb? Also, I think it will be interesting to see. 
that yeah, I think you somewhere yeah. mm -hmm. examples yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very interesting work and uh, please try to uh, publish the work by improving it and it will really help in contributing especially to understand the related languages for all of us as there's so much work to be done. And thank you for the uh, wonderful work. Yeah, thank okay, you. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, let me come in there quickly uh, before. Uh, in continuation to Shahini's comment, uh, if you look at the affricate series, you have the alveolar affricate, uh, then you have uh, alveolar uh, cha, then you have the, this za. Uh, so these alveolar affricate cha uh, and, uh, uh, and what you call uh, post alveolar or palatal cha, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, to me, it appears from the example that you have given in, given in the data that uh, alveolar fricative, the alveolar fricative cha, uh, occurs with central vowel type. So when there is a central vowel or low vowel, you have a cha, alveolar fricate. And when you have a high vowel like E and O, then you have something like the, the, the palatal, or you, you call it, what do you call Post-alveolar. The post-alveolar cha, this seems to occur with high vowel like E and O. So is this a, uh, what do you call, uh, allophone or, something I am not sure because uh, based on two examples that you have given, I could see that the post alveolar uh, occurs with high vowel like E and U, whereas the alveolar affricates occur with central vowel swa. Uh, so this is something that I am, I am interested to know. So you don't need to answer the question now, you can uh, later on find out for yourself. So okay. uh, any other uh, questions from our audience? Uh, sir, in the chat box, uh, there is some comments from uh, Dr. Changti. Okay, uh, the, we have, we have a comment. Can you speak, ma'am? Can you speak directly? Or you don't want? Uh, my connection is not very good, so. You are good, you are good, you are audible, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, sometimes not very good. Yeah, just, mm. just really interesting. I just like the, the phonology papers. Um, yeah, just, I just, my comment is uh, when you analyze uh, um, with phonology, though, I you know I've noticed a lot of people use word medial, and I'm not very comfortable with that. That's my, my basic comment. So what we look want to look at is the syllable structure, especially for vowels, whether they're open or closed syllables, and that's what makes a difference in vowels. And and for consonants, if the consonant is found in word medial, it's usually an allophone. So, um, so you might get, you know, the consonant, you know, if you analyze this, the, if on the syllable, it could be a, you know, a syllable final consonant that occurs word medial becomes, you know, something else. And uh, the comment you just made regarding that, um, I, I think that's palatalization following a high vowel that's quite common phonologically. So mm -hmm. that, that could be the the case so um yeah with the limited data out i you know i didn't want to comment but um that's you know th those are really useful things so um i just want to come you know comment you know uh, for phonology that you know it's more useful to look at the syllable structure rather than whether it's a uh, word initial or final and also in tibetan burman and languages uh we pay attention to what consonants occur initially and finally. Um, so um, a lot, if you see a lot of um, phonologies of Tibetan Burman languages, they'll give you a list of, and usually you have, most of the consonants will occur initially and very few finally. So in this language, it's basically an open syllable uh, language, except for the, the, the rhotic R, which could also be considered a vowel um, quality rather than mm -hmm. a consonant. You can an, analyze it that way too. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So uh, because uh, in phonology, one of the things of phonology is you look for patterns, and even if you have a segment, if if it's the only segment in that slot, you might want to look at it as a you know, a phonological variant of something else. So like even tone, you could, uh, or you know, you could consider that to be some kind of uh, 
uh, the feature rather than you know um, a tone itself. So, uh, so those are the um, things that you can you know look at in phonology. Yeah. So it's very interesting. We have very very uh, um, poor data on Tibetan Burman languages. So we really need a lot of uh, you know, very uh, thorough descriptions, uh, phonological descriptions of languages. And um, I would encourage these uh, researchers to do more and, you know, just document exactly what you hear. And, uh, you know, even if someone says that that's not possible, if you heard it, then you're correct. And so I want to encourage students to write down exactly what you hear. And don't worry about what people tell you that you're wrong or something, because you have to trust your ears. Um, so, yeah, well that's, this is one area that we're very short of in Tibetan Burman uh, language descriptions. You get a lot of syntax, but very little uh, good phonology, especially with tone and vowel quality. So I really want to encourage students to do that. Um, and also a lot of the different consonants that some other people don't hear. So um, there's, you know, very, um, I'm really enjoying the sessions. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have, if you have uh, one short question, we can entertain one short question more one from the audience. Yes, Pao Tang. Yeah, ma'am. Raise my hand. Okay, okay, good, good. Uh, um, I, I would just like to make an observation. Uh, uh, Ravina, that was a very interesting paper and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, picking up from where uh, Dr. Changte had left off on the Roti car. Uh, there is um, probably uh, you could look into uh, some other varieties or the speech of the elder people and see whether this rhotic R in an early form was the trill, the r, and uh, where you have uh, the the schwa uh, following the r. because then they we have uh, this and uh, all the syllables are are. Uh, except for some certain words where we have the rhotic R. And uh, another thing which maybe you, you could look into is whether uh, this uh, rhotic R is the kind of condition or some personality because in the uh, we have uh, or is. Uh, Okay, we seem to lose uh, Mimi's connection. Uh, half of the point we got. Half of, so you look into your rotic. Uh, so the point that uh, Mimi was trying to make and uh, Sangte was trying to make is uh, the rotic phonetically, not the rotic, the approximate r, 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 uh, which is uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, not quite common, but found in some Naga languages, not found in Kukitin and other, where we have a rotic type. So perhaps this phonetically behaves like a vowel. So you have a, a syllable, uh, what you call open syllable. Type. Open syllable is more common in your language. It's one of the suggestions. So any other comments that the uh, audience would like to bring in? One more last comment. Uh, Only just, two minutes. Okay. If I may be allowed, one yeah. more comment. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting to see uh, the differences, actually, uh, given that uh, both are from both papers are from the same uh, you know, language as well as same, I think, uh, region. Uh, so one thing I think uh, it would be interesting to see, and I think it's good to mention, the uh, informants, the, the kind of informants that you had, as well as uh, the uh, number of informants, and then of course the number of uh, words that was collected. Uh, these things are, I think, uh, the methodology part is equally uh, important so that it's, you know, it's light. Uh, and I say this because, uh, like you said, you, you, have both, you have said that this is both papers come from the same village, uh, based on the same village. So when you look at the, so, so many differences, uh, it's actually very uh, interesting. So it's the comment that the methodological part should also, I think, be mentioned. Okay, thank you, uh, Hemsu, for that uh, suggestion. Uh, now uh, we have to close this session uh, and move on to the next session, uh, next uh, paper. We have uh, Biman Deb Burma from the Tripura okay. University. Yeah. And uh, Tripura University. His topic will be on uh, 
vowel harmony in Kokborok. So now we give uh, Dr. Biman uh, his time. Yeah. Uh, sir, in between, I would like to update the audience that uh, at the 15 minute of the presentation, there will be an alarm bell to alarm the presenter that he or she has last five minutes. Thank you. Very good, very good. So, Dr. Biman, Biman? Yes, sir. Yeah, Am I audible, sir? Very much, yeah. You go ahead with okay, your presentation. Okay. Is it the screen is invisible, sir? Not yet. Uh, not okay, okay, not yet. Minutes. I have not shared yet. Yeah, now it is uh, processing. Yeah, it's visible. So, now. good morning to all the participants, paper presenters, and today's our chairperson, Otang uh, Sa. So, today's my topic is Cog Rock Bowel Harmony. So this is my deep introduction. Bowel harmony in Pog Barak is a phonological <laughs> assimilatory process. With the bowel in the first syllable of a word harmonizes with bowel in the second syllable in a given domain respectively. So typically the word when combined together in a syllable shares some phonological features with respect to height of the tongue. So these features of syllables mm -hmm. within a domain are phonological rather than phonetic consequences. Moreover, we can say that Pogorok exhibits progressive vowel pattern where the left syllable of a vowel harmonizes with the right syllable of a root vowel in terms of tongue height. So this is uh, inventory of Pogorok vowels. We have six uh, vowels, that is uh, front, uh, e, mid, a, uh, central, we have e, and law, a, back, we have two round, two vowels, u, and o. So, all the vowels that are found in the first syllable of a word are articulated in the same manner in the second syllable of a word, irrespective of their high, mid, long, front, central, back, rounded, or unrounded, as shown below in Nini, that is your, Chini, that is our, Bini, that is his or her. So I have put here only his. So in the above example, the first segments of a syllable, Ni, B, uh, C, B, are all pronominal prefixes, which the high front unrounded vowel, that is E, harmonizes in the second syllable with genitive suffixal marker ni, with the same high front unrounded vowel E. So, according to the height of the tongue, vowel harmony in Kong Brok is uh, divided into three points. So, I have divided like uh, in height wise, according to the height. That is high vowel harmony, mid vowel harmony, low vowel harmony. So apart from high, mid, and low, compound harmony can also be found in good numbers. So there are many good uh, compound harmony that can also be noticed. This is high vowel harmony. Uh, the three high vowels, that is E, O, and O are examined based on their vowels height, which harmonizes from left domain to right domain accordingly. These three high vowels in the first syllable agrees with the presence of the second syllable. The possible vowels that can mm, be harmonized me, together. Man. Yes, yes. Uh, can, can you please make your PPT in full screen? Okay, okay, okay. Where do I go? Uh, I think uh, just near that volume button, there is one uh, yeah, yeah. button. No, no, not that one, to the left side. Next to 110%. Next to 110. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. No, I will just hit maximum. 210. 
No, 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 not this one. That percentage that you yes, have. Yes, yeah, that yeah. That one. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Thanks. So, uh, <laughs> high uh, bowel harmony. So, based on high bowel harmony, uh, we examine this E, O, N, O from left domain to the right domain. These three high bowels in the first syllable agrees with the presence of the second syllable. The possible bowels that can be harmonizing together, both in first and second syllables, can be understood from the following points. So, uh, high bowel harmony with pronominal prefix. So, under high bowel harmony with pronominal prefix, we can see that uh, high front unrounded bell, that is U versus E versus E. Uh, if E has to be in the first syllable, then it has to be E in the second syllable. So, the first person, uh, plural chung, that is oi, has only one form of agreement, uh, which changes to chi, when harmonizes with a genetic marker, as exemplified below, chi ni. So chi is uh, a prominent prefix marker, ni is the genetic marker. So these two vowels harmonizes each other in high front unrounded vowel. Uh, this is the second person, uh, Nung, that is uh, Nini, Nihik, and then uh, third person. Uh, so this is high central unloaded, no, no, I lost it. Uh, high back rounded bowel. So in high back rounded bowel, that is U, if there is a U, Thus, in the second term, it has to be O. So there is a vowel agreement between O and O. Like no Tzu, that is your grandfather. No Yung, your paternal or maternal uncle or auntie. No Kumul, that is your brother-in-law. So O, O agrees each other. Uh, the third person, Bo, that is uh, C or he, in high back rounded vowel, change into bo. When combined together with a second syllable to give the meaning of a vowel harmony, as shown below, that is bo chu. That is o and o. That is third person. Bo change to bo. bo. That is bo chu. That is his or her grandfather. Bo yung. Uh, bo bo sister. So those are all o, o. That is now high vowel harmony with causative prefix. So there are lots. Uh, we can see causative prefix can all be can also be harmonized. Uh, something like KB, MB, FABA, FABA, and SABA, which harmonizes with the nucleus in a syllabus in a syllable. Something like uh, in twenty examples, we can see that. Uh, C is B wet. TC, that is wet. So there are so many examples. C, TC, fan. So I will just skip this example. MB, that is causative prefix. Uh, C, me C, make wet. So E, E, uh, agrees each other. Uh, P, fa, ba. No, for no. So, so many examples are there, which I have skipped. Now, we'll go to uh, mid vowel harmony. There is two mid vowel harmony, A and O, found in Kokborok. The phoneme A represents the mid front unrounded vowel, and phoneme O is the back rounded vowel. These two vowel phoneme A and O in the first syllable has to be the same vowel phoneme in the second syllable of a word in respect to height of the tongue. So now, meet vowel harmony with pronominal prefix. Uh, meet vowel harmony with pronominal prefix, uh, that is O. 
uh, found to be harmonized in mid vowel harmony in prominent prefix. The high mid unrounded vowel phoneme A has no harmonizing word in prominent considering to put the levels of the cell. So A has no harmonizing word in prominent considering in both the levels of the syllables. And now, mid, bed, rounded vowel, that is O versus O. If the prefix uh, O in the second syllable, it has to be O. Uh, something like Nung, second person Nung is Yo. It changes into No. When harmonized with the nucleus in the second syllable, as uh, example below, no, no, no is the prefix, and no is turned from no, it has turned into no. So, uh, same as no toy. No is a prefix, and toy is something like uh, your maternal auntie. There is no change in the third person, bo, she or he, when harmonized with the second syllable as shown below uh, in the example, bono. So in the earlier example, we have seen that bo indicates he or she. To him or her, here the word bo has no change. Bo remain as it is. And uh, mid vowel harmony with positive prefix. Mid vowel harmony with causative prefix has three phonemes KB, MB, FABA, and SABA, which harmonizes with the nucleus in the second syllable of the word. This causative prefix agrees with the root verb in a given domain. So these are the examples. I'll just skip it. So many examples. This is, these are the examples. Now we'll come to law vowel harmony. There is only one law central unrounded vowel phoneme, A, in Kokboro. Maximum numbers of vowel agreements are found in kinship terms. In the example below, A indicates first person pronominal prefix marker. The word ani, my changes to a when harmonized with the root word of the second syllable. So in the example 63, ama, a indicates uh, my. From, it has changed to a from ani. So ama, my mother. Afa, my father. Ata, my brother. So, Below example, the word ang, I, remain as it is. So this ang, uh, let me read out everything. Before assimilation and after assimilation also, the word did not change when combined together. The first part of the first syllable is harmonized with the first part of the second syllable, as shown below in C. So this is the first part of the syllable. We can say, Three syllable also. So I have considered it as this is the first syllable of the first part. So this is the second part and, and then two syllables. So ang pa, something like that, ang fayong. So ang, the word ang, I, there is no change. Ang remain as uh, I and it, it indicates the meaning of my. Uh, when it combines with fayong, Ang Fayong, it, it means my younger brother. Ang Sazala, my son. Ang Sazet, my daughter. The second and third person prominent prefix, na and ba, also changes from nini, your, bini, his or her, when agrees with the second syllable. Something like uh, na hano. Ba na na hamzuk, ba hanok, ba hamzuk. So uh, there is also a positive prefix, very few. 
So this is the only one I found. Uh, Kaham. It is good. Ham is be good. Kaham is good. So uh, compound harmony. Apart from prefixational harmony, compound harmony can also be found in good numbers, which harmonizes together. The findings of compound vowel harmony are noun plus noun, noun plus bar, bar plus noun, bar plus bar. Some segments of the elements are dropped or deleted, and some words either before or after assimilation remain same in compound harmony. So this is noun plus noun, hook toy, that is saliva. Hook indicates mouth to uh, water, that is cook toy. Literally meaning mouth water. So 76 example, cock borok. Cock is a language, borok is people. So it is the Tiprasa language. Literally meaning Aboriginal language of Tiprasa people. Uh, in the word talk, that is but, the final bellar sound is dropped when combined together with the word knock, house, which form the compounding word as tonop, that is chicken coop, or we can say chicken house. Uh, see the example 77, to, uh, knock, chicken coop, to, here, o is dropped or deleted. Uh, that means but uh, when combined with knock, that is house, it becomes ton up, cook, that is uh, literally meaning chicken house. Noun plus bar, hasal, ha indicates land, chal uh, is be far. So compounding together noun and bar, it means far. I will just skip because time is just nearing. So this is my concluding part. The present seminar paper, Babel Harmony in Kokorok, can conclude from the following points. Babel Harmony in Kokorok is a phonological assimilatory process. It is a progressive vowel pattern where the left syllable of a vowel harmonizes with the right syllable of a word in terms of tongue height. Babel Harmony in Kokorok is distinguished into high, mid, and low. Compounding words like noun plus noun, noun plus bar, bar plus noun, bar plus are also well attested as a compounding harmony in Kogborok. Uh, KB here means Kogborok. Mostly vowel harmony is found in pronoun and positive prefix. So from the discussion, we can find that the word ani, which means my becomes a when assimilates with the second syllable. The second person no, you becomes ni, no, 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 na when assimilates with the second syllable. The third person bo, she or he becomes bi, bu, bu, ba in combination with the second syllable. It is also noticed that in few examples, the word ang, I, and Bo, she or he did not change even before and after assimilation. There are lots of words with positive prefix, which makes a vowel harmony when syllables combine together. So, Francis, thank you. I don't know whether I took time or still I have a time. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Beman, for your. Yes, beautiful paper on uh, vowel harmony. So as we have seen, uh, uh, Biman has presented uh, on Kokborok vowel harmony. Uh, lots of example has been given and uh, on vowel harmony. Yes, so sir. perhaps uh, uh, this is one language which is very rich in vowel harmony. So now the uh, floor is open for comments and suggestions. We have uh, in our midst, uh, Professor Alec uh, Coop also, he can always uh, come in and uh, add his comment and suggestion as well for this session. So now I open uh, the floor for comments and suggestions. Yeah.
Any comments, suggestions from our audience? Yeah. Uh, can I ask one question? Yeah, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Biman uh, De Barma, yes, for that, I think, very uh, clear presentation. A very interesting uh, uh, process uh, that we see. I, I was just wondering with regard to the uh, compound harmony that you showed, uh, because uh, unlike the uh, first part, uh, where clearly there is a uh, harmony happening between vowels. The compound harmony, uh, how is that uh, treated as, as a vowel harmony? Uh, because I think it's just coincidence that both vowels are, are the same. So in, in examples like uh, 74, 75, 76 onwards. Yeah. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. What the Temtu sir has said, that, that was also my thought earlier. Should I include this compound harmony or not? Because when I cross-check so many words... You put, can you put uh, please kindly put uh, so example on the screen, uh, 75 to 26, 75, 26. So that we have them. Yeah, things like these. Uh, yeah, yeah. Examples like these uh, yeah. they don't look like harmony. Uh, is there any change of vowels in other contexts? Actually, see, sir, this uh, hasal is a one word. We can say, okay, sir. So, uh, this uh, sal is a bar. Ha is a noun. So, when, one second, one second. Yes, they know. Is, uh, are, uh, is ha and chal independent words? Right. Okay. Ha is len and then chal also, they are independent yeah. words. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, this uh, hasal uh, is a word like uh, we say something like don't go far places. Hasalota thangli. But uh, when we use as a bar, we remove this ha. And uh, we use only this sal. So I feel that this compound harmony has to be included in vowel harmony. That's what my confusing area. <laughs> so when I look into this uh, compounding harmony, there are so many words like, uh, yeah, here 77 also. So talk and knock. So this, uh, somewhere else, this is a dropping of the velar sound for uh, this uh, talk. And then house, we say tonok, something like where do where she can sleep at night. She can house, we can say uh, poop, she can poop, poop. So somewhere else, uh, should I consider it as a bowel harmony or... <laughs> Should I not consider? That's what my confusing area. So to my thought process, I was thinking that this can also be just, I can feel that this can also be included in compound harmony. So this is the only area where my doubt lies, whether should I include okay. this compounding. Yeah. Okay, we, we, got your, we, we, we got your point. So this yeah, is yeah, your... So. Uh, area of a doubt whether you should uh, include this as a uh, harmony or not as Temsu has suggested it looks these are uh, coincidence uh, yeah, by coincidence. itself the word to and there is no process to explain why you should treat them as uh, uh, vowel harmony unlike the previous examples okay that is taken care any more questions Can I have a quick question? Yes, please come in. Uh, I was curious about uh, the low vowel harmony, the A vowel, uh, in terms of the first person possessive prefixes. Can we go to those examples? Okay, okay. Low vowel harmony. 
Yes, these oh. are. Um, so it looks like we have, you know, uh, these short forms, which are actual prefixes in these kinship terms, such as mother, father, and brother. And uh, this is common in Boro also to have uh, possessive prefixes in these terms. Uh, so most of the kinship terms take uh, a prefix, but not all of them. So if we go to the next slide. So kinship terms like brother, son, and daughter, they usually do not take a prefix. So what we have here as um is actually a full pronoun. Uh, that's how it looks like to me. So if we consider them as pronouns rather than prefixes, uh, that would you know, resolve the issue why these are not changing because these uh, kinship terms do not allow uh, the prefixes. So that might be one explanation uh, what's going on here. Yeah, right, sir. That's what I have written here also, sir. Like yeah, it, yeah. it has not changed. Yes, then, yes, so not all kinship terms are equal. Yeah, yeah. We have to distinguish between uh, those which take A uh, and which do not take A. Uh. And this might not have anything to do with uh, foul harmony. Yeah, I also That's agree with your point. What about in that case, if you can add a second person, something like your your brother, your son, your daughter. So what happens no, there? There is no vowel agreement, sir. Something like okay, uh, so ah is uh, not found, it will become a. Uh. So. No vowel agreement in second person. So what uh, Krishna is saying, so these are uh, not uh, examples of uh, vowel harmony. These are full, the ang are full pronoun and they are not uh, prefix yes. and they are inherent. In Tibetan Burman languages, you don't call mother or son, so that a possessive pronoun has to be added. And the yes, possessive sir. pronoun here is a case of full possessive pronoun. So ang, that is what he's trying to make. Okay, yes, sir, yes, any sir. more questions? We have three minutes. I have three minutes. Uh, so if you have questions, please Sir, may ask I your questions. Yeah, please. Uh, I have one uh, one uh, question regarding this arm. Um, it is actually a uh, uh, generic uh, possessive uh, marker, which is found in uh, Tibeto-Burman languages. Uh, what I want to um, uh, say is that I, I work in co Cogborok syntax. In Kogborok, I have seen they use boo, like boo ma, my mother. This, this marker is uh, not always uh, very uh, significant uh, for them. Maybe it, it is because of, uh, of contact, because it has been in contact with the Bangla for several uh, centuries together. So wh what my question is, is it uh, mandatory uh, in this language, this arm? Yeah, that is what uh, I don't know. The speaker will explain. That's what we know, as I know, is mandatory. Yeah, you will explain. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, ma'am, for asking me a question. So, this R, uh, which uh, means I, we cannot omit. <laughs> yeah, but, that uh, is how it is called inalienable possession, right? Yeah, so, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, when it combines, the ma is the, the root word that is mother. So ah, uh, like uh, it's a pronominal uh, this one. So we cannot uh, omit all these words. These are independent words. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a um, uh, uh, this is a characteristic of uh, Tibeto Burman languages. Why I I have been asking because uh, in 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 Kogborok, I work in Kogborok, which has been in contact uh, with with Bangla. Bangla doesn't have the it's an indo aryan language. It doesn't have uh, uh, such features. But what I have seen in Kogborok, it, this ah, uh, which is called generic possessive marker, is not yes. always mandatory. Maybe it is because I just I'm just curious to know because uh, uh, maybe because of contact, Kogborok is losing this indigenous uh, feature. So that's why I was curious to know whether it is uh, obligatory in this language. Yeah, it is obligatory. Okay, okay. Thank you. 
Sir, there are a few comments on the uh, chat box. Can I say something? Yes, sir. Carolyn Mara, can, oh, I, can yeah. I say something? Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Um, it's like this in Garo, because Garo and uh, Kokborok they are very close, yeah, and geographically close. they are very close. The, the only thing is that, you know, they, we are separated by uh, a few hundred miles, I think. And uh, if you go by, by uh, uh, along the plains, in that case, it's much more close. Now, um, in our language also, Ama Appa, Ama yeah. Appa, Ama, my mother, my mother, Appa, my father. It is Ama Appa always. And yes. it is always mandatory. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, ma'am. Mm. Thank you, ma'am. And then uh, we say, uh, my my younger brother, Anjong. We'll say Anjong. Yeah. Ano. Ano. Yeah. Ano means uh, my, my, me. uh, my little little girl, my sister, Ano, like this. Okay. Instead of Nuno, instead of saying Ano. Yeah. So these are a few examples which I can, I can get. Yeah. Abi, Abi means my, my elder sister. Uh, Abi, my elder sister. Uh, Ang Jong. Okay. Ang, uh, thing, no. Ang, Ang Sa. Ang Sa is my, my child. Ang Sa is my yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. Ang Sa. Yes. Okay, now uh, we have to stop there with the comments. Uh, before I move to the next last presenter, I'll just read out two comments in, in the chat box. One is from uh, Changte, Madam Changte, and one from Dirins. So Changte says, uh, vowel harmony is often a morphological feature, often manifested in paradigms like gender, masculine, feminine. And Dirin says uh, something like, uh, it is a clear case of deletion of uh, Wheeler stop. I don't know which example he's referring to. So these yeah, are two Willis. comments that, uh, yeah, these are two comments that uh, you can take into consideration. Uh, we would like to stress the time, but I am completely uh, out of time. So now we have to move uh, to the last and final uh, presentation for this uh, first session. So the topics, the topic for the, our last presentation is uh, a preliminary description of Chung Li Ao phonology by uh, Tem Nung Sang and Amenla. So now may I invite uh, Kemsu and Menla to kindly take over your presentation. <clears throat> Okay, uh, thank you, Bao Tang. Uh, am I uh, audible? Yeah, you are, you are, you All are. Right. Yeah, so uh, the uh, topic, uh, we have slightly made a change uh, because uh, we have not been able to include a lot of things that, uh, or cover a lot of things. So uh, we've changed it to preliminary observations. And this is on uh, Janki, the uh, third dialect. Uh, spoken by Aus. Uh, this is a joint paper uh, with Aminullah Chankija. Uh, I'll be presenting on, on uh, our behalf. So uh, those of you who are familiar, uh, the, the uh, uh, three uh, languages spoken by the Aus, Chungli Mongsen and uh, Chanki, which uh, this paper is based on. Uh, it is usually considered uh, that it is a subgroup of, of the uh, Mongsen. Uh, but uh, there are significant differences between the two. Uh, there's also this assumption that uh, Mongsen and Chongli, uh, Changki speakers can uh, understand or maybe speak. Uh, but I think that's more a result of the uh, contact situation. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, population, uh, there are just seven villages where, where Changki is spoken. And uh, all of the 2,60,000 uh, uh, owls, uh, if you look at the uh, Chunky uh, speak, uh, by the way, this is, these are the seven villages where you have these uh, spoken. And uh, Chunky is the variety, uh, which is the major village uh, of the seven uh, where this, uh, this paper is based on. 
So if you look at the population, there's just like 4,000 uh, speakers uh, in these seven villages. Uh, though, of course, uh, there's an estimate that uh, maybe six to 7,000 live uh, outside of these villages in the uh, towns and cities. Uh, so I think uh, approximately 10 to 12,000 uh, speakers uh, of, this, uh, of this dialect or of this language. And uh, I think uh, so far, not much analysis has been done. Uh, apart from, I think I had done a paper on, uh, or started a paper on on the tonal uh, analysis, uh, which is far from complete. Uh, so, uh, in in terms of uh, yeah methodology, uh, this is based on data collected from uh, one male and three female uh, females, different uh, points of time. Uh, it also includes the uh, second uh, author of this paper. Uh, the variety is the chunky, and the number of words uh, is around uh, 600 or 600 plus uh, words. And uh, for the elicitation, especially for uh, tones, uh, we use two frame sentences. So I said, and then the word came in. Uh, the reason why we had to use uh, two was because uh, the, 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 there are variations even within. So this is a high, high, Nina. Uh, sometimes this pitch drastically comes down to a mid. Uh, so we have had to use this, uh, he said, which is pa na, right? Uh, but again, here, sometimes you have a change in na where it comes up to mid when this is a mid, when this word is a mid tone. So we've had to juggle around with uh, these three frame sentences when things were not very uh, clear. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, consonant inventory. Uh, this is very similar to the Mungsen uh, inventory, uh, and uh, especially the uh, uh, Mangwatung uh, variety. Uh, so you have the stop series, uh, aspirated and unaspirated. You have a fricative. Uh, unlike Chungli and Mungsen, where you have a palatal sh uh, as an allophone, you don't have this here. And the reason being that the sh remains as s, right? Uh, the only thing happening is uh, e reduces to a shua. So instead of she, which is what you find in Mongsen and Chongli, you would find that uh, as corresponding would be s in, in Chunky. Then you have two affricates, uh, aspirated and unaspirated. You have a nasal series, you have lateral. And then the rhotic, you have uh, both the voiced and voiceless. And again, this is, uh, if you compare this to the Mongsen varieties, many Mongsen varieties have uh, the voiceless sonorants, right? Nasals and, and laterals. Uh, in, in Chunky, it looks like they've lost that uh, contrast in the nasals and lateral. Uh, in the rhotic, that is still uh, maintained. And then, of course, your approximant. There are two segments. Uh, one is the glottal uh, her, which uh, we're not considering to be part of uh, the, the uh, inventory because I, we have just uh, four words uh, and, and just one lexical uh, out of these. I'll come to this. And then even the approximate were, again, uh, based on the, it's, it's very restricted distribution, all right? Uh, we, we've uh, considered this to be more part of a diphthong. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, just to uh, quickly go through this, I'm not going to read this. So uh, this is like the distribution, uh, no restriction uh, with regard to the stops, except for the glottal. Again, very, uh, I think this is common. Initially, this is not found, uh, word initially or syllable initially. And then you have the fricatives and affricates again, uh, except for this, uh, as a coda, it, it cannot occur as a coda. You can find it uh, word initial and word medial. The her, uh, yeah, so this is the case. Uh, the only lexical item that we found was this word in a rush, heatly. Uh, the others are more of uh, non lexical, yes, and uh, exclamations. Uh, 
Uh, so this is the reason why we have not considered uh, or, and we don't find minimal pairs uh, for this. Mm, nasals, yeah, here you'll see that uh, it's except for the ng, word initially you, you can't have this. Uh, and the reason is that it's neutralized uh, in the beginning. So if, if you have something like fish, so here you have ang a, here clearly it's ang a, uh, and in compounds like dry fish and fermented fish, uh, instead of the ng coming here, you have the na. So here you have a neutralization of uh, the, the suspension of contrast uh, where initially, where it becomes uh, dental. Uh, and then, yeah, liquid, your la and ra, again, it, it can occur uh, freely except for word final or coda position. Again, these are your minimal pairs. Again, to save time, I'm not going to read through all of these. So uh, we have these uh, minimal pairs. Uh, coming to the vowel inventory, again, uh, similar to both Chungli and Mungsen, you have four vowels. Uh, you have the high front E, high back U, you have a low back uh, R, and uh, a central uh, vowel, the schwa. So these are your four uh, vowels. And uh, yeah, again, Vowels, I think uh, it can occur as a nucleus of uh, a syllable. And uh, so there's basically no uh, restriction. Again, this is your minimal pairs. And uh, yeah, again, I'm gonna skip this. The syllable uh, canon, it's, so it has a simple syllabic structure, one onset, one coda, with a uh, obligatory uh, nucleus, uh, which is the, uh, the vowel and, and an obligatory uh, tone. Uh, the onset position, all consonants except the glottal stop. Uh, the coda, again, stops and nasals are allowed. Uh, and then, uh, of course, in the nucleus, all vowels and, and all tones. Uh, just one thing with uh, regard to uh, clusters or even uh, the C2 position. Uh, there are some words like these uh, where underlyingly it's not a cluster, but uh, in rapid speech, usually what happens is, you know, something like bra, uh, can, can, you can have these. So this is, I think, more of a phonetic uh, aspect. And so, uh, and yeah, the, these are the only examples that we had. And the other is this. So again, there are one or two words like this, Q and Kula. Okay, by the way, this is snail, uh, frog, and uh, rat. I think we missed out on the gloss. Uh, so yeah, again, here, what we're doing is uh, we're treating this as more as diphthongs, uh, which I'm gonna to come to uh, later. And then in the coda, uh, apart from stops and nasals, uh, you can also have a R, in very few words. In fact, uh, we have just two words, one meaning chili, mirts, and looks, terze, terze. And then uh, sometimes the tra meaning 10 is shortened, right? In constructing uh, words like 11, 12, 13, right? So you have ter. So except for these, again, we're, we're not very, uh, sh because of this, we're not very sure whether it should be part of the coda, uh, yeah. So uh, for now, yeah, we, we are considering a simple structure of C1, uh, V, C2, and an obligatory uh, tone. Uh, diphthongs, again, uh, because of these words, uh, we, we are considering this as EU, uh, diphthong EU. Uh, so you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six uh, diphthongs, again, Wa is treated as a diphthong, uh, u and a, uh, and this is again. I'll come. I'll show you this that the word can occur only with an a vowel. It doesn't occur with uh, other other vowels. So uh, this is one reason why we have treated this as a more of a diphthong. And uh, so it, this is clear. The first five. This is again not. We're not very sure whether it's more of a reduction of i. Uh, to a because this is what we sometimes see 
uh, in the verbal uh, forms, all right? So that's the reason why it's in uh, red. So yeah, here you have both wa and au, iu and ui, you have an a and i. Okay, I can hear the alarm, so that's, I guess, the warning. Rhyme restrictions, uh, this is well, what we have. The shua can occur with all, uh, the co uh, coda. Uh, e, you see some gaps. U, you see some gaps. And R, you can see some gaps there. So like I said, R, this is the only words that are possible. Uh, here, with E, again, we're not very sure because the E often gets reduced to an uh, all right, in the environment of uh, the year or even here. And, and Jiang is a bullet. Uh, it comes from in, which means uh, iron. So that's why uh, you know, the, maybe there's, a, there's an overlap between the e uh and the e, and that's the reason why you have e uh throughout. Uh, with u, except for two borrowed words, ut meaning camel and hun meaning gold, which comes from Indo Indian, uh, it doesn't allow. And then again, a, uh, it doesn't allow it with the ma and na, except for these two. This is uh, disyllabic underlyingly, which becomes monosyllabic. This is uh, an meaning chicken. So again, apart from these three, uh, you don't have this. So some of these gaps are, I don't know, can be explained, I suppose. Uh, some of it are accidental gaps. And uh, so what we have here is uh, in Chongli, uh, I've argued that uh, you usually have the back vowels with the back consonants like uh, the glottal and ng. And it, it seems to reflect this uh, distribution, okay, uh, even even in, in chunky. Uh, onset nucleus, again, uh, no restriction as such for the stops and nasals. Some restrictions with the onset nucleus, uh, with the uh, palate affricates, uh, zhe, zhe, and zhe, zhe. Uh, zhe, this one seems to be uh, more of an accidental gap, I suppose. Uh, zhe is... Uh, this gap, uh, again, this is very f similar to Mongsen, uh, where you have these kind of gaps, uh, so restriction, restrictive occurrence of zhe with the uh, shua. Zhe, uh, zhe, as I said, it cannot occur with e because e gets reduced. Uh, so you, instead of c, you have se. And then wo, again, it occurs only with a. And so we've uh, considered this as to be a, a diphthong wo. Ye, again, there seems to be an overlap between E and E when it occurs with a year. So I put that uh, with an asterisk. Uh, tones, uh, and this I think has been the most uh, challenging uh, uh, in this uh, language. Uh, very similar to Chungli Mongsen, three way contrast of high, mid, and low. And uh, words in Chunky are largely uh, disyllabic. Uh, nouns, we found only uh, 20 monosyllabic uh, words, and all of these are bimoric. Uh, verbs are, the, the roots are monosyllabic, but the roots, uh, the, the verbs cannot occur uh, on their own. It has to have a suffix. So roots are monosyllabic, but uh, all of it are bound. So on the surface, these are also disyllabic. So words in uh, general can be considered as disyllabic in uh, chunky. These are some of the minimal sets. Uh, we have uh, identified five tonal patterns, high, high, mid, mid, low, low, H, L, N, L, H. Uh, as you'll see here, no, you don't have a minimal set for all the categories. Uh, so the maximum that we got was this. Uh, I am, I am, I am. So meaning biscuit, village, and hunger. Uh, here you have one mitz, but the one that I've given in red is maximum you'll have four. Uh, just one thing before I stop uh, is that uh, in verbs uh, in Mongsen, the past tense is a zero marker. So you have something like li, bai. Uh, and this is taken as a citation tone. So even in Chongli, it's disyllabic. So you have ali. Again, the past tense is, is zero marked. 
Uh, and so this is the tone that you have on the past tense form is taken as your citation tone or your lexical tone. Uh, so something like this. Mungsen in verbs, you can have something like liro, right? Liyo and leyo. The u here is identified as an optional uh, declarative mood clinic, u, uh, by, by Alec. Uh, it's optional, so you 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 can all you can always drop this. Uh, even in Chongli, the corresponding uh, uh, marker is a. Ah. Again, it's optional, and in fact, you'll never see this in in the written form. Okay, uh, but in Chunky, uh, which again surfaces as o or u, uh, similar to Mungsen, it's not optional, so uh, you, you cannot drop it. And and because of this. Uh, it's actually quite difficult because you cannot have the verb stem in isolation. Difficult to find the uh, tones, uh, and and this is something which uh, yeah we're not we've not been able to do so far. Uh, still in the process. So something like uh, these words, right? It, it looks like so. Here for these present, past, perfect, the future, imperative, and nominalized. The stem, if you look at the tones on the stem, you have mid, low, high, mid, low, high. It keeps changing. And uh, even here, it, it, it kind of is similar, the last two, with this part, but then it again changes here uh, with the imperative and nominalized. Or the last one, where it remains the same with all, except for the future, which then it goes to a high, high. Uh, or something like this, uh, where it looks like, again, a high stem, but it follows the other pattern in the previous slide. Uh, so yeah, th th this is the situation with the verb tones, uh, something which we're not able to do that. So in conclusion, just um, in terms of uh, the variations, you must have seen this, U and O. Uh, th this is a variation, so uh, it's not phonemic. and uh, the O again commonly crops up uh, in derivations. Uh, plosives again uh, between intervocalic and in the environment of nasals, uh, it, it's voiced uh, many a times, and, and which is I think again different from Chongli and uh, at least standard Chongli and and some Mongsen where uh, you don't see this kind of uh, variation in the uh, voicing of plosives. So yeah, I think my time is up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Jamsu, for your uh, very interesting paper. Now the floor is open for comments and suggestions. So we have uh, some around uh, 10 to 12 minutes for uh, questions and comments. So may I open the floor for comments and suggestions from the audience? Hi, uh, this is Priyanku here. Can I um, ask a, a couple of questions? Yes, please. Hi. Um, uh, I was just wondering, so uh, you already mentioned earlier that uh, the three uh, varieties of vowel that we are talking about, Mung and Chungli and uh, Chunky, they have some different melodic differences in the assignment of the tone. So I, I want to know if you have anything new in that uh, uh, perspective, number one. Secondly, uh, like we have uh, recently seen that there, the phonological tone categories, they have some phonetic differences between the uh, three dialects. So that I want to know what is your opinion about it. Would there be a, some, do you also hear some phonetic differences between the tones of the three dialects? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, initially, uh, so uh, when I worked on the uh, comparison of uh, tonal patterns, uh, definitely there, there is a, a, a difference in the uh, tonal uh, patterns and tonal assignment uh, in these three uh, dialects. Uh, but again, like I said, given the, uh, now this thing which, which we find out that uh, the verbal tones, uh, we were not very sure how to uh, identify. Uh, so I'll have to go back to what I did earlier 
and, and see it. Though, of course, I think in the earlier, most of the correspondences that I looked at was uh, based on the nouns. So uh, uh, maybe it would not affect that much, but yes, uh, I'll have to go back to that. Uh, phonetic differences between these uh, dialects. Uh, yeah, I think even, even with uh, maybe uh, there are differences uh, where the difference between these three tones is much narrower uh, with Mungsen and Changki. Uh, and it's maybe more broad with, uh, with, with Chongli, standard Chongli. So uh, I think uh, the gap between the high tone and the mid tone is very narrow. Uh, even uh, with, with Changki. And that's the reason why uh, I think it's very difficult to hear this, uh, even in elicitation, even in a frame sentence, uh, because a high tone, like I said, in the, in, in the frame sentence, uh, I said, Nina, uh, comes down to a mid-mid, and then it just continues. So in that sense, uh, and I've seen this even with Mong Sen. There are a, a few words uh, where, you know, a, a high, a high tone actually comes down to a mid phonetically. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's just an observation that bit, the contrast between high and mid is very narrow, I think. Right, right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, uh, we also have a question. Uh, Le uh, Professor Lekub has raised his hand. So I'm uh, kindly uh, coming, Professor Kup. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, and thank you also to Dimsa for a really interesting talk. It's great to see some work being done mm -hmm. on Chunky because it's the one dialect we know very little about uh, in comparison to the other dialects that have had some research done on them. So I was just wondering, um, with your frame sentences, you showed us in an um, earlier slide how you get differences um, in the, um, uh, the tones of the words preceding the target. And I was just wondering if uh, intonation um, might explain those differences and if it was a problem and um, how you dealt with it. Um, I, can I ask you all three questions that I've got? Um, or do you want to deal with them one at a time? No, yeah, please go ahead. go ahead. Okay. One at a time, maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay. You'll get confused. Okay, so maybe you can talk about this first, please, them, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure whether uh, intonation uh, plays uh, is, is the reason for this. But uh, so usually in a frame sentence, uh, you don't see this kind of variation. So uh, even when we work with the other languages, frame sentences are quite you know, robust. It maintains. Yeah. But for some reason, I, I don't know. Uh, of course, uh, in the frame sentence, pan. There, I think it's explainable because maybe there's a, you know, uh, in the environment of a mid, it, it rises up. So that mm. I think is explainable. Uh, I'm not sure about the I said, because maybe maybe the high tone is more marked. Uh, so it is in that sense that it, it phonetically does a down step, maybe mm. uh, the pitch level comes down. So, mm. and so whenever that happens, I ask them to repeat it in the other frame sentence. So, so as to make, you know, be sure that yeah. it's a high tone or a mid tone. Mm. Okay. Um, you know, related to this might be the, the possibility that there's particular tone sandy classes of verbs or associated with particular with particular suffixes as well. And I started looking into this in, into my grammar um, in 2007, but it was just too massive a job to try and sort it out. It was really complicated. But I would notice that some suffixes caused different um, tone sandy perturbations than others, which made me suggest, so made me think that perhaps we can um, group um, the, either the suffixes or the roots into particular sandy classes, but that would have been a you know massive job um, on its own. Um, another possibility with this um, is that the sandy doesn't follow any rules. It's uh, just remembered by speakers and we may not ever be able to work out sandy. In some Sinitic languages, it's so complicated that uh, people who've worked on these languages surmise that 
the sandy is just remembered as part of the construction and there's no particular phonological rule that can that can apply yeah actually that so that's the reason why uh, after looking at all the patterns uh, i also looked at the you know possibility of uh, looking at it in terms of of a template so whether uh, a present has this mid mid template whether a past has this lmh template because it looked like 90% of the verbs uh, that we had were actually following this. So the template that we have here at the top, it looked like it was following this pattern. But yeah. then, yeah, again, if you look at the check, the other verb, uh, it's not very regular. So mm. that, that, yeah, that was one possibility that uh, I also uh, thought about. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, quite a challenge in these languages. In all of these languages of Nagaland, it seems that tone sandy is horrendously complicated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, okay, so uh, just one other question. I don't know whether you can answer this, but it's quite interesting how uh, coronal coders are very restricted, or either completely restricted or um, uh, restricted in some ways, as you showed us with Chunky. Uh, this is the case in all of the Aoic languages that, um, at least that I've looked at so far. What is it about um, coronal coders that makes them so unpopular to these languages? W would you have any suggestions for, for that? Coronal, like the rho that, that were... We yeah, but even about. things like, like uh, uh, dental, nasal, um, yeah. uh, dental, um, voiceless, um, plosives, um, they, these are much rarer in these languages if they exist at all. Um, Daniel Brun noted this in his thesis as well. And um, I'd like to know why. What is it about coronal coders that make them unpopular? Maybe maybe other people will have some ideas as well. But anyway, just like to share that with you. I don't yeah, know whether you've got I think, uh, In terms of uh, looking at the marked and unmarked structures, uh, coronals are, I think, considered to be uh, more marked than dorsal and labial uh, consonants. So yeah. in, in that sense, uh, in the coda position, uh, you would expect unmarked segments to occur. Mm. And since coronals are more marked, you don't, well, language I think does not like it there. And that's the reason why you find it. Yeah, <laughs> I think even in uh, the other Eastern Naga languages, like a na is, doesn't occur or is restricted. You, yeah. you don't find. So but why no. are they marked? Maybe Priyanku can give an answer, a phonetic reason <laughs> for that. <laughs> Priyanku, okay. any, any guess? Thank yeah. you very much. Any, uh -huh. any guess, yeah. Come in. No, not, not at this time. But I, uh, that, that's an intrig intriguing uh, discussion. And then <laughs> I was just thinking that maybe we should have a, on the sidelines <laughs> somehow, we should have an OW phonology phonetics uh, session somewhere. Uh -huh. Maybe OWs don't like a corona in the coda position, <laughs> but other languages love to hear it. <laughs> now, it's also in, in Sanctum and Lota, you find the same uh, constraints. And also, I think um, I, I, Yim Chung as well. Damso, no? Yeah, one thing was missing there. One, one. Yeah. It's a no. Yeah, all right. We'll leave that as a problem to solve in the future then. Thanks for um, responding to my questions. Thank you. And thanks for your talk. Okay, thanks uh, so much, uh, Professor Coop, for uh, your enlightening comments. We wish uh, you can be here with us uh, whenever you are free. I know we, you'll be very busy, but whenever you are free, you please kindly join us and offer us your comments. Okay, now uh, I am all, uh, completely all, uh, out of um, time schedule. So I would take one last question. If there is a very pressing uh, comment, then we can close this session. One more comments from the audience. Uh, Before, I, just want to, yeah. I just want to ask uh, Sir Temsu uh, if he has looked in the environment where uh, the tone, the number of tones, if there are codas with all the vowels. When I say that, I mean, we're looking into the syllable structure. So how many tones are possible if there are codas? And is it, what about with the open syllable and with, with the codas? Like, of course, excluding the 
glottal stop. If he has looked into that aspect. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, who, who is this? Uh, I can't see. Uh... Sahani, I think. Sahani. Sahani. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Because I can't see this on the screen. Yeah. Uh, I, I did, I did uh, check this. Uh, yeah, but uh, so in Chongli, uh, so, so there are restrictions like uh, mid-tones cannot occur on uh, check syllables and ending with stops. But in, in Chunky, I haven't seen that kind of a restriction. Uh, it, it seems to occur uh, in both. So all three tones seem to be allowed uh, in both open, closed, as well as uh, soft and checked, smooth and checked uh, syllables. So there does not seem to be any restrictions with regard to tones at the uh, underived uh, words. So, uh, like, I find it very interesting to check, if, especially with the types of vowels and also the type of the, even the consonant, even in the initial position and mm. the final, actually. I don't know if that will help us to give a, an explanation also. Yeah, uh, maybe, yeah. Um, I, can, I, can, I haven't looked at the uh, vowel-specific uh, distribution. So, yeah, maybe I, I could do that. Thank you. Oh. Okay, okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Temsu, for your uh, paper. It's a good paper. Uh, we had a good discussion over the, your paper. So I, as a chair of this session, uh, would like to once again uh, thank all the presenters. Uh, we had four presenters, and uh, those papers were very, very enlightening. And I apologize for not, uh, not able to spare much time for discussion. And this uh, shows that... Uh, uh, we need uh, more uh, uh, seminar of this sort, very, 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 we can uh, discuss all the pros and cons of the phonology relating to this un unstudied or less uh, explored languages. Mm -hmm. So with uh, that uh, time constraints, I apologize once again, and I once again thank all the uh, presenters uh, <clears throat> for the uh, papers that we have presented. So with this uh, few uh, comments, uh, my time is up and I hand over the time uh, to the program coordinator. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank the chairperson of the session, uh, Dr. Pao Tang Haukif, all the paper presenters, uh, Bibitinio Mere, Revini Mubi, Bimande Burma, Temsunung Sang, and uh, the co uh, the co author, uh, Amela Changkiza. Thank you very much for your uh, wonderful presentation and all the uh, participants who were actively engaged during discussion. So thank you all for your kind presence. So with this note, uh, we close the first session of uh, today's conference. And before that, I would like to inform all the paper presenters of the second session that is in Morphology 1 to log in before 15 minutes ahead of the scheduled time so that we can have a check for your slides uh, audio and video. Thank you very much. So we'll meet again at uh, 12 p.m. Indian Standard Time. That is uh, not half an hour. It's almost uh, 11 38. So thank you very much. So see you soon, all of you again. With this note, we close the first session. <laughs>